So Donald Trump continues to expand the electoral map and create a new baseline for the GOP going forward. Hello everyone, welcome back to Retaking the Nation. Today we're going to discuss how Donald Trump has hit a new high and a new baseline in terms of his electoral strategy and what states he can add to his column based on polling and data we have so far for the 2024 election. So right now I'm going to build out what looks like to be the baseline for each candidate, both Joe Biden and Donald Trump. You can also see here on 270 to win, this is their consensus map for the 2024 election. And it looks very different than what people might expect. Donald Trump has 235 electoral votes, a part of his baseline. This is kind of ridiculous to think considering he only won 232 electoral votes back in 2020. And he's gained a lot of ground on Joe Biden since then. So if we look at the map here, Texas and Florida are likely. The entire South seems to be uh, in Donald Trump's column. We can add Ohio and Iowa to that column as well. If you think about it, many people thought Ohio might be in play in 2020. Iowa might be in play in some regard. Doesn't seem to be that way either. We're going to add Nebraska second to uh, Joe Biden's column. But Alaska seems to be out of play now. Of course, Joe Biden, the Democrats, yes, most, much of the West Coast Parts of the Southwest are, of course, going to be Democratic. The Northeast consistently, uh, many aspects of Maine. Uh, Donald Trump's going to win Maine second. Uh, Illinois, of course, Hawaii. Um, and I would even put Minnesota in sort of that more guaranteed to be Democrat column, Virginia as well. But if we're looking at Donald Trump's baseline, 219 electoral votes is the bare, bare minimum, I would say. Texas is not in play. People who think Texas, the uh, you know, the the Democrat, you know, are going to take over Texas. I think that's absolutely insane. You have to be uh, off your rocker to actually believe that. So let's look at the polling aggregate for Texas. Donald Trump is up 9.3 points. Do you think Joe Biden has a shot at Texas, especially when the polls back in 2020, oh, Trump's going to win Texas by a few points. That's what 538 had the aggregate at. Well, not this time. Trump is leading big time. We have you know, a lot of reversion in the suburbs going back to Republicans. Trump is doing better nationally. And we have a lot of Hispanic voters moving to the right in these areas, especially in the Rio Grande Valley area where we saw massive swings in 2020. Uh, Joe Biden does not have a shot at Texas. You have to be delusional to believe that. You also have to be delusional to believe Joe Biden has a shot in Florida. I know we have reports from their campaign saying, oh, Biden's going to campaign there. We can get the turnout going there. It's not going to happen. Donald Trump will easily win Florida. He easily won it in 2020. Uh, the Democrats got blown out there on every regard in 2022. It's likely going to be a six, seven, eight point win for Donald Trump in 2024. So 219 is the very, very bare minimum. But we know we can add a few more states to this baseline. One of those states is North Carolina. Yes, it was a closer state in 2020, but it's not looking that way at all. If you look at the betting odds, Trump is up 80 to 20 basically in that state. And if you look at any polls, Joe Biden hasn't even come close in any polls in a long time. The closest poll was Quinnipiac, where he was only, uh, you know, where he was down two points still, which is still a greater margin than 2020. So Donald Trump is leading there big time. You can add that to his column in terms of his baseline for 270. Uh, it's 235. They have North Carolina as a part of that baseline. One state they did not have a part of that baseline that I think we can add at this point is the state of Georgia, which is shocking to me, I know. But if you look at Georgia's polling aggregate so far, 2024, Georgia, uh, Donald Trump versus Joe Biden, 4.6 points. The best poll for him was the Wall Street Journal, where he was still down one. But a lot of polls, even accurate polls like New York Times, Siena, nine point victory for Donald Trump in the state. If you look at the new voting act that Brian Kemp signed, where they have to count all the ballots by 8 p.m. Eastern time, we're not going to see the same funny business that we saw in 2020. Brian Kemp won by a large margin in 2022. Yes, the Republicans sort of flopped in the Senate race, but in terms nationally, getting the turnout in Georgia, I think Donald Trump is going to improve there. And if he improves by four points in the popular vote, he's going to take Georgia, which he barely lost by about 10,000 votes in 2020. So we can add that to Trump's baseline. So arguably Trump's baseline is 251 electoral votes. I forgot to add New York there. New York is a part of Joe Biden's baseline. The last state that I'd say we can add to Donald Trump's baseline of attack is the state of Nevada. A state where he's polling incredibly well. If we look at Nevada here, let's look at the 2024 election. Trump is up 6.2, larger than Georgia. I mean, the swing here in the state is incredible. 13 point lead by the New York Times Siena poll. This is just unprecedented. This is completely insane. 
And Republicans performed pretty well there in 2022, despite it being sort of a mixed year in terms of Republican performance. Adam Laxalt barely lost the 2022 race. They captured, with Joe Lombardo captured the governor's race in 2022 by a thin margin, I think about a point there. If you look at 270 to win, let's see if any of their maps, uh, we got Sabato's crystal ball shows similar margin. They show many of the Midwest states being Democrat, which I don't know if I agree with. Um, not many networks have caught up with the fact that Nevada looks to be very much in the Republican column. But basically all these maps that we see here, let's look at the poly market odds. Nevada is in Trump's column, according to the poly market odds uh, so far. Yes, they do have some of the Midwest states as tilt. So those will likely be very, very close. But in terms of the baseline, I see uh, Donald Trump's baseline being 257. And you can even make an argument for Arizona, which I'm a little less optimistic about. But right now, you could see, okay, I need 13 electoral votes if you're Donald Trump. <laughs> or if you want to get to 269, you need 12 electoral votes. That's why many are uh, you know, proposing that, hey, through Arizona and through Nebraska's second district, you could get that 269 tally and pull out the election. That's not something I want to bet on. I'd like to you know, pick up one of these Midwestern states instead. I don't know if Arizona is going to be going red uh, anyways. But if you're at this 257 baseline, all you need to do is pick up either Michigan or Pennsylvania. Very, very achievable, by the way, since they were razor thin states in 2020. Uh, Donald Trump could easily do that. He could easily pick up one of those states. But you're looking at a 257 baseline for Donald Trump. And I only see a 226 baseline for Joe Biden. So really kind of gives a picture of the odds for the, both these candidates going forward. And if you look at the data that we have so far, this is Donald Trump's baseline. He really needs to focus on winning these Rust Belt states which he's pulling well in. He needs to keep up the effort there and the momentum there if he wants to win these states. Anyways, let me know in a comment, what do you think Joe Biden's and Donald Trump's real baselines are for their electoral votes? Which states do you think they have in the bag and which states uh, that I pick do you think are actually going to be closer? I'd like to uh, hear your opinion in the comments down below. Thank you so much for watching. Like and subscribe to the channel. Anyways, I'll see you guys next time.